The Mayakashi archetype are a purely zombie type series of monsters that each represent an attribute in Yu-Gi-Oh. Water, Earth, Fire, Wind and Dark. Light is the only one that does not house a Mayakashi. This is most likely due to their malevolent motives. However, this could change with future support, as their storyline may have revealed that one of the Mayakashi might have had a change of heart, but we'll get to that a little bit later. The archetype debuted in 2018's Hidden Summoners pack. Additional support would arrive in the 2019 pack Savage Strike Special Edition, with the most recent support in 2020's Dual Overload. Their playstyle revolves around getting out two of the monsters, the perfect play usually being to summon Hazian and through its effect summoning out Daki from the deck. With these two monsters you have a total of three stars, enough for the first synchro monster to be summoned. Daki will then return through her effect, meaning you can tune again, and again, and again, and again to rapidly ascend through all of the synchro monsters in the archetype. But it doesn't stop there. As the duel progresses, if one of the synchros is destroyed, the previous form will be special summoned in its place. This continues all the way back down to the beginning, essentially making a deck that revolves around a synchro ladder, which you climb up and then climb back down. And on top of all this as well, if you manage to get out the link monster as well, well, it's also a part of the chain of summoning. Their archetypal name of Mayakashi comes from a Japanese word that can mean make-believe, fake, or deception. This meaning fits as the Mayakashi are based on a combination of Japanese and Chinese folklore. In Japan, the Mayakashi would be known as dark spirits called yokai, magical beings who could transform and take on a human appearance. We see this link immediately within the Mayakashi archetype, as each of the yokai synchro monsters has a corresponding human form in the main deck. But the question then becomes, why would powerful magical beings become human? Or better yet, what was forcing them to? To find all these answers, we'll need to look back 100 years ago, where the story of the Mayakashi all began. Long ago, a village was erected on the edge of a forest. Unbeknownst to the villagers, this forest housed a group of spirits that were none too pleased to have their place of peace disturbed. Little by little, the forest would be chopped down and used for materials. Eventually, the spirits had had enough. Six spirits would lie in wait for villagers to venture a little too deep into the forest. When they were alone, the spirit would possess the person and make them their new permanent host. Now with a physical form, the spirits began protecting their home and over time, the villagers grew fearful of the forest as those that ventured in would never return. A secret war was waged between the village and the spirits over what they both called home. The spirits were given the name of Mayakashi, as rumours had spread of humans who could be seen in the forest during the day. It turns out that the Mayakashi were granted two special abilities after fusing with a human. The first was after every sunset under the veil of darkness, the Mayakashi would wield unimaginable power to create their wills into reality. However, at the break of dawn, in the presence of the sun's rays, the spirits would lose all of this power and would transform into their mere mortal human forms. Many years of conflict followed. The humans did eventually realize that the Mayakashi were weakest in the day and so would send out parties to hunt and kill them. However, the Mayakashi were able to hide very well. So the humans realized that they would need to fight them at night when they would reveal themselves. This is where their secret weapon would was unveiled, the Shiranui, a group of warriors that wielded spiritual magic imbued into their weapons. An epic battle would take place against the founder of the Shiranui and the Mayakashi, and although many were slain, the warrior could not defeat them all, and so was struck down by Yoko, the graceful Mayakashi. After his defeat, his body vanished in a flash of blue flame, with only his sword remaining. A hundred years would pass of continued quiet war. The stalemate would only be broken by a samurai who wielded the sword of the former founder. His strength was immeasurable, able to summon the spirit of the founder himself from within his blade, and with this strength fight against even the most powerful Mayakashi. 
In the grandest of battles, the samurai took on three of the Mayakashi together, Yoko, Yuki, and Gashadakuro. After merging with the spirit, he killed Gashadakuro, the most powerful spirit. Seeing that they were outmatched, Yoko and Yuki fled into the village to hide amongst its people. They were saved only by the break of dawn. Here, they would bide their time until their strength would return and the samurais would diminish. The samurai did search for many years, but it was to no avail, eventually succumbing to old age, but not before passing on his teachings to his apprentice. Throughout these years, however, Yoko, after spending time among the villagers, had began to soften her hatred towards them. Her feelings towards humanity were truly tested when the ghost would meet a young girl. The girl was kind and would visit her every day, almost as if she could sense her loneliness. Yoko herself felt the same about the girl. The two would become extremely close, and because of this, something strange happened. When a yokai feels true love for a human, a piece of their power would imbue itself with within that person as a form of protection. This revelation surprised them both, and upon realizing who each other were, they were forced to fight. The battle was exhausting, but in the end, neither could deal the final blow, as in their hearts, they truly were friends. However, it was in this moment of hesitation when another Mayakashi in hiding, Yuki Ona of the Ice, would make her move. She would steal the girl's power for herself, the shock of both Yoko and Squire. Yuki Ona, having lived in solitude away from the humans, had never seen or felt their kind nature, and so, with the power of the Shiranui and the Mayakashi together, she was able to transform into Yuki Ona, the absolute zero Mayakashi, and her vow to create an eternal night devoid of life could now begin. And sadly, this is where the story of the Mayakashi ends. What future awaits the Shirunui and the Mayakashi? Well, the only more support will tell. And if you haven't already checked out the Shirunui side of the story, well, here it is. But for now, let's take a look at each of the individual Mayakashi monsters and see what yokai they are based on. Starting with... Daki the Graceful Mayakashi known in the Japanese as Beautiful Mayakashi Daki. You can only control one Daki the Graceful Mayakashi. When a Mayakashi monster is special summoned to your field from the extra deck while this card is in the graveyard, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck the turn you activate this effect, except Mayakashi monsters. Her yokai form is Yoko the Graceful Mayakashi, known in the Japanese as Beautiful Mayakashi Yoko. You can only control one Yoko the Graceful Mayakashi, you can only use each of these effects of Yoko the Graceful Mayakashi once per turn. If a Synchro Monster in your possession whose original level is 11 is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish one other zombie monster from your graveyard, and if you do, special summon this card. If this card is special summoned from the graveyard, you can destroy one monster your opponent controls. Every single one of the Synchro Mayakashi monsters has can only have one of itself on the field, can only use each of its effects once per turn, as well, all of them have the ability that if a Synchro Monster in your possession, whose original level it is more than it, is destroyed by Battle or Card Effect, you can Special Summon that card from the Graveyard. And as well, all of them have the ability that if they are Special Summoned from the Graveyard, they have their own unique effect. From this point forward, for brevity, we're only going to say their unique abilities. So... There you go. Daki comes from Chinese folklore. She was the daughter of a military leader who, after a dispute with the king of the Shang dynasty, Zhao, offered her as a broker for peace. However, on the night before Daki would meet the king, she was possessed by a nine-tailed fox spirit. The nine tails, sometimes called the Kyubi, is a mischievous spirit who takes pleasure in tricking humans by turning into a beautiful woman. When the king met her, he became utterly obsessed. So focused on her beauty, he would neglect his work. She was the embodiment of corruption in the story, alluring the noble king into a life of indulgence and cruelty. In the end, the Shang dynasty would fall. Daki was to blame, and as a result was exercised to rid her of the nine-tailed fox spirits. Two nice nods to this tale are the ethereal tales in Daki's artwork showing her possession, and the fact that Yoko is a level 9 synchro monster, matching its nine tails heritage. A small side note as well, and just a theory, a Yu-Gi-Oh theory if you will. Of all the Mayakashi, 
only Daki was able to form a connection with Ashuranui. But why was this? Well, if we look at Daki, we see that she is of the fire attribute, something that only she shares with the Shiranui. Perhaps due to their affinities for fire, this was why they could create a connection, and it would also explain why the true threat, Yuki owner of the ice, was the one to follow through with the World of Darkness plan, since she is the polar opposite to fire, and as such, couldn't form any connections with the Shiranui's due to her cold nature. Yasha, the skeletal Mayakashi known in the Japanese as Corpse Mayakashi Yasha. You can discard one other Mayakashi monster, special summon this card from your hand. You can use this effect of Yasha the Skeletal Mayakashi once per turn. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except Mayakashi monsters. His yokai form is Gasha Dekuro the Skeletal Mayakashi. If a Link monster in your possession is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish one other zombie monster from your graveyard and if you do, special summon this card. If this card is special summoned from the graveyard, it can activate this effect. This turn, this face-up card is unaffected by other card effects. Yaksha in human form resembles the Yakshas from Buddhism, spiritual entities that would protect the righteous. However, this is just the disguise, as Yaksha's yokai form of Gashidakuro is based on something far sinister. It comes from the yokai of the same name, which translates to us as the Starving Skeleton. This creature from Japanese folklore is a giant skeleton that is created from an amalgamation of bones from those who died of starvation and were not buried. The skeleton would appear at night, looking for lone travellers, grabbing hold of whoever they could find and biting off their heads and drinking their blood to satisfy their unquenchable hunger. Gashidakura is the most powerful Mayakashi in the archetype. This is fitting as in terms of the yokai's lore it is based on, Geshidakuro skeletons were said to be indestructible, making it fitting that this monster too is the most powerful of the Mayakashi. Heijin, the winged Mayakashi. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can special summon one Mayakashi monster from your deck, except Heijin the winged Mayakashi. You can use this effect of Heijin the winged Mayakashi once per turn. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck, except Mayakashi monsters. His yokai form is Tengu, the winged Mayakashi. He has his archetypal effects, but his unique ability is that if it is special summoned from the graveyard, you can destroy one spell or trap your opponent controls. Heijin is based on the monks from Buddhist mythology that would wield a Kakara, which was a device that made a noise to announce a monk's presence. Over time, it would be adapted and made into a weapon that was wielded by the warrior monks of the Shaolin Temple. However, again, this was just a disguise, as his true form is that of the supernatural creature Tengu, a creature that was part human, part bird. They had a red face and a long nose and were very angry and vain. They would carry off monks and small children that they disliked. If they chose to return them, they would always be brought back on either the brink of death or madness. They also possessed the power to transform into priests or nuns to mislead others with false images of the Buddha. Shafu, the wheeled Mayakashi known in the Japanese as Rickshaw Mayakashi, Rickshawman. If this card is normal or special summon, you can target one Mayakashi monster in your graveyard except Shafu the Wheeled Mayakashi. Special summon it in defense position, but negate its effects. You can only use the effect of Shafu the Wheeled Mayakashi once per turn. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except Mayakashi monsters. His yokai form is Obaro Garuma, the Wheeled Mayakashi, known in the Japanese as Rickshaw Mayakashi Obo Garuma. He has his Mayakashi abilities, but his unique ability is, if this card is special summon from the graveyard, you can activate this effect. This turn, your monster cannot be destroyed by battle. Shafu is not based on anything supernatural, simply a man who pulls a rickshaw. And that's all he really needed to be, as this is the perfect form for a yokai to not only hide in plain sight, but to carry its victims into secluded places where it is confident it can strike without interruption. In fact, its yokai form takes this further, as Obaro Garuma is based on a ghostly ox cart, which, unlike others, had a sinister face adorning its front. It was said that on misty nights in Kyoto, the sound of the cart could be heard in the mist, and if someone would 
step outside, they would find a Borogaruma outside of their home. Sukagi the Poisonous Mayakashi. If a Mayakashi monster in your possession, except Sukagi the Poisonous Mayakashi is destroyed by battle on opponent's card effect while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card. You cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck the turn you activate this effect, except Mayakashi monsters. His yokai form is Suchigumo the Poisonous Mayakashi. He has the standard Mayakashi abilities, but his unique ability is that if it is special summoned from the graveyard, you can have each player send the top three cards from their deck to the graveyard. The word Suchigumo has two meanings in Japanese. The first was to refer to a renegade who did not bow or follow the words of the emperor. The other is of the Earth Spider, which is fitting as this monster's attribute too is Earth. Earth Spider yokais would hide in mountains. They would appear with the face of a demon, the body of a tiger, and the arms and legs of a spider. They would lie in wait for travelers to get caught in their webs, so that they could eat them. Yuki Masume, the Ice Mayakashi. If you control a Mayakashi card, other than Yuki Masume, the Ice Mayakashi, while this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can special summon this card. Then send one zombie monster from your deck to the graveyard. You can only use this effect of Yuki Masume, the Ice Mayakashi, once per turn. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck, except Mayakashi monsters. Her yokai form is that of Yuki Ona, the Ice Mayakashi, known the Japanese as Icicle Mayakashi Yuki Ona. You can only control one Yuki Ona, the Ice Mayakashi. While this card points to a Synchro Monster, your opponent's monsters cannot target this card for an attack. If a Synchro Monster in your possession is destroyed by a battle or an opponent's card effect while this card is on the field, you can target one face-up monster on the field, its attack and defense become half its current attack and defense until the end of this turn. You can only effect of Yuki Ona once per turn. Her upgraded form is Yuki Ona, the absolute zero Mayakashi. Negate any activated effects of your opponent's banished monsters. If a monster is special summoned from the graveyard or a monster effect is activated in the graveyard except during the damage step, you can target one other face-up monster on the field, change its attack to zero, and if you do, negate its effects. You can use the effect of Yuki Oni Absolute Zero Mayakashi up to twice per turn. Keep in mind that her effect, because she has absorbed the power of the Shiranui, is the perfect counter to fighting against the Shiranui in a match of Yu-Gi-Oh, since she is able to negate the effects of opponents' banished monsters. All three of these monsters are based on a Yuki Ona a yokai known simply as a snow woman. The Yuki Ona are born when someone dies in the snow. They return as a tall, beautiful woman with ice white skin only appearing on snowy nights. They hover above the snow, leaving no tracks. And it is said that the look from the eyes of one of these creatures is said to frighten someone to the brink of death. Finally, we have all of the spells and traps. Mayakashi Return. Take one Mayakashi card from your deck, except Mayakashi Return, and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. You can only activate one Mayakashi Return per turn. Mayakashi Winter. Monsters your opponent control lose 100 attack and defense for each Mayakashi monster with a different name in your graveyard. You can only use one of the following effects of Mayakashi Winter per turn, and only once that turn. Send this card and one Mayakashi monster you control to the graveyard, draw one card. Banish this card and one zombie monster from your graveyard, then target one Mayakashi monster in your graveyard, special summon it. Ghost meets Girl, a Mayakashi manuscript. During the main phase, target one zombie synchro monster you control, special summon one of your zombie monsters with the same attribute that is banished or in your graveyard, but banish it during the end phase. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn after this card resolves, except zombie monsters. You can only activate one Ghost Meets Girl, a Mayakashi manuscript, per turn. Mayakashi Mayhem. If a zombie synchro monster is special summoned except from the extra deck during the damage step, you can apply one of the following effects. You cannot apply the same effect of a Mayakashi Mayhem for the rest of this turn. Draw one card, set one Mayakashi spell or trap directly from your deck, except Mayakashi Mayhem, send one monster with the lowest attack your opponent controls to the graveyard, inflict 800 damage to your opponent. Mayakashi Metamorphosis. Discard one card, then target one of your Mayakashi monsters that is banished or in your graveyard. Special summon it. Your opponent cannot target it with card effects this turn. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck the turn you activate this card, except Mayakashi monsters. You can activate one Mayakashi Metamorphosis per turn. Fateful Hour, known in the Japanese as Witching Hour. Target one monster that cannot be normal summoned or set in either graveyard, special summon it. And with that guys, that is the Mayakashi archetype done. Let me know what you thought in the comments section below, but before we go, I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who helped support this channel and basically make these videos possible. 
Thank you firstly to my platinum backer that gives that little bit extra every month, Nemochan77, thank you very much. As well to my YouTube and gold backers, Michael Wachlowski, Silver Defender, Stefan Pohl, ZackZack30, GooseyQ, Ignis Drasil, Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, Yokaido Kenya, Riaz Gremory and Elizabeth Denise Leggin. Thank you all so much as well to my silver backers too. Thank you for watching, catch you later.